Good afternoon friends and welcome back to the homestead. So it has been a couple of weeks since I put out my last video and there has been a few things going on here on the homestead that I have been preoccupied with. And one of those things is the awesome amazing news that my sister-in-law and her family just moved to Kentucky. So they got here about two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago, and they've been staying with us while they got the house ready to move in. They are renting my husband's cousin's property, which is directly behind us, behind the mountain here. So they are super close. They are within minutes of us. So I have been entertaining the last couple weeks, helping out with living here in Kentucky because it is a different way of life than the California life. And another thing that has happened is we've got some more pups. Let me take you inside and show you what we got. So one of my beagle dogs, she got out and visited our neighbor next door and his dog was out and she got pregnant. So we've got nine new babies that were born last week here on the homestead and every single one of these dogs I am going to be giving to homes because I cannot keep any more dogs that I already have. So let me show you Miss Oreo and her nine pups. Hey mama. Look at these little babies. So Miss Oreo is a beagle mix. Papa's a beagle, Mama was a mutt, and the dog next door is also a beagle mix. So these dogs really took on the beagle look. All four of the boys are black and or sorry, brown and white and definitely look like beagles and have the beagle colors. And then all of the girls are either all black or black and white. And they're super super cute. So she's been an excellent mama. They are just over a week old and they are all doing very well. She takes very good care of her babies. So that's the other thing that I've been dealing with here on the homestead. We did get our first frost and unfortunately I did not get out into the garden fast enough. So I need to go back there right now and see what it looks like as far as if anything died as far as my peppers go all right so we've got one of our baby chicks down here and she was stuck in the barn and we did not know that she was stuck in the barn apparently her foot got caught in a crack and she tried to get it out and she moved it closer in the crack as it got smaller and it wedged her foot in there I don't know how long she was there. Hubby was actually out there and he found her and her foot was just dangling. So he brought her to me and my original thought was, there's no way she's gonna make it. Um, so I had suggested maybe we just, you know, let her go so she's not suffering. But he insisted that we try everything and I looked at the wound and I could tell that her foot had already begun to heal over. All right, so we noticed as I was looking at her foot that her foot had started to heal over and it really just needed to be cut off because it was just hanging there. So I went ahead and I cut off her foot and she instantly started eating, drinking, like she showed so much life, like she did not want to give up and she was perfectly fine, she wasn't sick, she was just hungry, thirsty, and then that foot was just dangling. So I went ahead, cut it off, and I put some uh, medication on it just to make sure that it didn't get infected. And as you can see, she's got a little stump here. There we go. Here's her little stump, and it looks really good. And she is perfectly healthy. And she has strengthened this one foot that she's just hopping around, she's standing on it, she's eating, she's drinking. Um, I don't know what it's gonna look like for her to be with the flock. We might just keep her in a smaller area where she can kind of flourish and not get taken by any predators or get picked on by the other chickens. But we'll see. We're gonna give her some more time to strengthen this one good foot that she has. 
She's got several different names right now. Captain Hook, Hoppity. My husband thought of one, but I can't think of it at the moment, what he was thinking of calling her, but, or him. Not, not sure yet if it's a boy or a girl. I'm, I'm thinking it's a girl, but she's still too little for me to know. So we'll see. But right now she's in a cage. It's a little bit bigger so that she can move around and get some strength into this one foot. So kudos to hubby for not wanting to give up on her because I was ready to throw in the towel. I just didn't want her suffering. But she's perfectly fine. She's not suffering. She's not showing any sign of pain. She's doing really, really, really good. All right, so let's head up to my backyard garden and let me show you how it's looking. All I had left back there were my peppers and flowers. Those are doing really good and then some herbs. Two beds of sweet potatoes. And I think that was about it. I noticed by looking out the window that my sweet potato vines definitely died back and a lot of my zinnias died back because of the frost. So here is my sweet potato patch, this one and that one. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out today along with all of these peppers. I'm going to pull the herbs, see if I can take them inside to see if I can get them to last a little bit longer inside the kitchen and then get this bed ready for winter because it's coming. It's right around the corner. So let me get my stuff. And let's get starting on putting this garden to bed. All right, friends, so I've got my wheelbarrow. I got some boxes because I have tons of peppers that I'm gonna go ahead and pick before I rip out all of these pepper plants. I'm gonna put the peppers in the boxes and then all of the plants themselves, I'm gonna go ahead and put into the wheelbarrow and dispose of them. Also, we're going to go ahead and collect those sweet potatoes. Fingers crossed that we actually have sweet potatoes in there. The raised bed that I did over here it did okay. It'll do better, I think, next year if I mulch it really good. That will be for next year. But this one I didn't mulch, and I don't, don't really need to because there's no weeds in there. So let's see. We'll go ahead and pull those up and see what kind of sweet potatoes we got and peppers. got a nice little amount of sweet potatoes here. This is almost better than the other one that I had. They're a little bit smaller, but they were a lot easier to get out because this ground was super soft in the raised bed and there was absolutely no weeds. So it did make it easier to pull them out. I did plant this probably a month later than I did the other one. That one had longer time to grow versus this one, so that longer time in the ground probably would have been better and I would have got a little bit bigger ones, but still, I'm happy with this. This is my first year doing sweet potatoes and I would call this a success. So let's go ahead, take these inside, empty out these boxes so that I can fill them up with some more of these hot peppers that I have out here in the garden. Some pretty good decent sized green bell peppers. Almost got a whole box full of just green peppers. All right so all sweet peppers have been collected. This entire box is full of green bell peppers and then I'm gonna take these inside 
get them put away and then come back out and get started on my hot peppers and finishing up this garden. All right, friends, all my hot peppers I've got in here. I've got anything from Anaheim chilies to cow horns and cayenne peppers, jalapenos, all those hot chilies to make my sauce with, I've got in here. So I'm gonna take these inside and then we're gonna pull up the remainder of these plants and go ahead and dispose of them so we can start cleaning up this backyard garden. All right, friends, so I'm all done sweeping up the weed barrier. I got all of my pepper plants out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull all the stakes out of the weed barrier and then roll this weed barrier up and get it into the pump house. And then I'm gonna call it a day for the backyard garden. I'm gonna come back on another day, rip out all of my flowers, get everything cut down really good, and then go ahead and put down all my cardboard, make sure I have some uh, rocks or bricks that I can put on top of them so that they don't go anywhere and I'm gonna allow this garden to rest for the winter. So let me go ahead and roll this up and we'll call it a day. That's the second one. All of my weed barrier is out of the garden. All right, friends, so everything it looks good. Again, I'm gonna come back probably in a couple days and put down some cardboard and maybe some mulch on top of it just to keep the weeds out of here and then prepare it for next spring when I can go ahead and plant in here again. But it looks pretty good. All right, friends, so I am done for today. Thanks for hanging out with me while I got this garden started on prepping it for winter. I will bring you back when I go through and put the barriers down to just kind of add to the overwintering of this garden. So thanks for hanging out with me, friends. Until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. As always, I hope all is well and have a blessed day.